Welcome everyone to the third Thursday meetup of the West Orlando WordPress meetup group. I'm Rob Watson, a co-organizer and host. West Orlando WordPress is an official WordPress meetup group affiliated with the WordPress Orlando and WordCamp US meetup groups. As part of the WordPress community, many people contribute to the open source project, and many of us may want to, but are unsure about how to join in. In this session, Michelle Frechette will share, will share different opportunities to contribute to WordPress, both officially and to the community at large, as well as sharing how to make sure that anytime you do contribute, it counts towards your company's involvement. You'll also learn more about how you don't even need to know how to code to contribute. Michelle Frechette is the Director of Community Engagement for Stellar WP at Liquid Web. Michelle was called the busiest woman in WordPress by Matt Mullenweg at WCUS 2022. In addition to her work at Stellar WP, Michelle is the podcast barista at WPCoffeeTalk.com, co-founder of UnderrepresentedInTech.com, creator of WPCareerPages.com, the president of the board for BigOrangeHeart.org, director of community relations and contributor at PostStatus.com, co-host of the WP Motivate podcast, author, business coach, and a frequent organizer and speaker at WordPress events. Michelle lives outside of Rochester, New York, where she's an avid nature photographer. You can learn more about Michelle at meetmichelle.online. At this point, I'd like to invite everyone to mute their microphones for the presentation. Michelle, thank you for being our presenter this evening. The time is now yours. Well, thank you for having me. It's exciting to be here and share about working in uh, contributing to the WordPress open source project. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Participating in the open source project, participating in WordPress, I also call this becoming a WordPress superhero because when you do give back to the WordPress uh, open source project and into the WordPress community, you kind of feel like you could be a superhero because we all participate in something that actually helps people around the world uh, democratize publishing, which I absolutely love that, that uh, tagline, democratizing publishing, and making it possible for people in countries all over the world to be able to share uh, what the things that they want to put out to the world are. So WordPress does that very, very well. So WordPress does pub power over 40% of the internet at this point. I think we're up to like 43, 44%, something like that. That's a tremendous amount of the internet. And it's a tremendously powerful resource that we have. And it's free. It's free. That's just bizarre to me. Now, it is free, kind of like a free puppy, in that if you want to do a whole lot with it, and you want to have your own hosting, and you want to be able to um, do add-ons and plugins and things like that, you can absolutely spend some money to do a little bit more with it. But you can use WordPress for free, and I think that's pretty amazing. It's a tremendous gift to us. So what do we do with it once we have that gift? So we build websites. And sometimes they're really good and sometimes they are really, really bad. What you see here is a website I built when I first started freelancing. And when I tell you when I hit publish, I was so excited. I thought it was the most beautiful thing ever. It was also the biggest learning experience I've ever had. And it probably cost me so much more money time-wise than anything else, but it was also an education. So I paid for it that way. But you can even make money building really, really bad websites. Let's hope you're not building really, really bad websites. But we all start somewhere and we learn and we grow and the sites get better as we go. We make money from them. Like I said, even the bad ones we can make money from. So uh, when I first started freelancing in WordPress about, what, about nine years ago, I think, eight, eight or nine years ago, I was charging $300 for a website and $500 if it included e-commerce because I had absolutely no idea how to price myself and I had no idea how to value my own time, but I have gotten much better at it since then. But even so, I was able to pay my bills and uh, keep gas in the car and food on the table, as they say. So we do and we can make money from WordPress. But what's even more important to me as far as contributing to WordPress is we have a lot of fun with it or we can have a lot of fun with it. Uh, certainly there are times when things go wrong and we are frustrated, but at the end, we get to do things like meetups, we get to do things like WordCamps and participate in different ways that help us help other people. And to me, I really enjoy WordPress and having a lot of fun with it. But then I ask myself, and maybe others are asking themselves too, maybe we should do more. 
what else could we do? So one of the things that I talk about a lot for myself is paying it forward. Because if I had to pay back every single person who's ever helped me or helped me get a foot up or helped me fix a website or contributed code to what I was doing, I would never, ever be able to pay back the debt that I owe to people for their assistance in helping me get to where I am today. So instead, I look at paying it forward in a lot of ways. I've, I have over the years mentored people, what you, who you see in this picture here. This is back when I was working at GiveWP directly. And the person in the picture with me is Amanda Gorman. She graduated high school with my daughter and came to me and said, I want to build websites. Um, I was hoping you could help me with something. She showed up in my office and I said, what CMS are you using? And she said, I don't know what that means. And I said, are you using WordPress? No. I said, well, let me teach you WordPress. And as a part of mentoring her in WordPress, she eventually got a job working with me at GiveWP. P. And when I left GiveWP to work for the parent company, she was actually she actually assumed my role as director of customer success at GiveWP. So mentoring and working with Amanda helped us both in the space. And I have mentored other people and coached other people over time as well, so that it was I was able to give back to other people like other people had given to me. You can teach a class in WordPress. I used to teach a lot of classes in WordPress prior to the pandemic. You can see this one was actually in 2017, back in the day, uh, intro to WordPress classes and be able to kind of help other people gain a foothold, either make a little side money or start a career working in WordPress. And it's tremendously um, fulfilling to help somebody else find a way to provide for themselves and their family using something that's near and dear to me. And so for me, teaching classes was something that just was a natural progression of helping to share. What's interesting about WordPress is I had so many people, whenever I would teach a class, say to me, how come you're teaching other people to do what you do? Aren't you just providing more competition for building websites? Aren't you giving away too much? And I said, are you you know, thinking of, you're only thinking about the people who might live locally. You're also not thinking about the fact that there's so many people with so many bad websites in the world and everybody could use a little fresh up on their website, if not lots of businesses that still just only are operating um, either with Google ads only or with, um, you know, a, a Facebook page, for example. So helping other people learn WordPress doesn't create more competition. It actually helps open up the whole field to everybody. I also in the past have held clinics. And so you'll see here, we have a bunch of people. We had a big old clinic. We had lots of people helping each other learn and helping each other fix broken websites. So when you have a clinic and people can come and explain what's going wrong with their site, uh, tell you what they need help with, and you can contribute even a little bit with a little code of CSS maybe, or, hey, I know a plugin that will help fix that. You know, a couple of hours or a co-working session where you do those kinds of things is really helpful to other people. And again, it's a really great way to pay it forward and help others in their pursuit of WordPress and learning WordPress and making um, a living using WordPress or even just to, as a hobby. So we have a lot of people who are hobbyists as well, and that's a fun way to... Uh, to be able to help others is hold those clinics. And even when we moved into having only online meetups, we still did online clinics and helped each other by letting people present what there's going on and then uh, their issues and show their screens and then have other people contribute to ways to solve uh, the problems that they had. And then we also, same safe space uh, that we were meeting in for a while, we organized co-working where we would have a full day, nine to four usually of co-working events. And so we would all get together and just work on WordPress stuff together, work on our websites, work on our blogs, whatever it was that people were working on. And the beautiful thing of it is it kind of operates a little bit like a clinic also, right? So you lean to the person next to you and you say, hey, do you have a solution for X, Y, Z? And the person says, oh, I know a plugin for that, or I know some CSS code, or I know this or that, um, or to say um, the accessibility on your site could use some tweaks. There's not a lot of, um, you know, color uh, uh, 
I can't think of the right words today, but the optimization for color and for accessibility is not there, whatever those things are to help each other kind of level up or just to kind of feel the vibe of others in the room doing what you're doing. It doesn't take a whole lot to organize a co-working day. You don't have to prepare slides. You don't have to teach. You don't have to do anything but find a space, have some tables and chairs and make sure the Wi-Fi is there and there's enough outlets for everybody to plug in. So organizing co-working is a great way to pay it forward as well. You can speak at a meetup. So this is a friend of mine, Joseph Myers, who uh, lived in Buffalo. He's now somewhere in the Midwest, but he drove to Rochester and spoke at our meetup one night and was talking about SEO. Um, you see Yost Valk's picture on the screen there, for example. Having somebody speak or speaking at a meetup is another way to be able to pay it forward into the community. Maybe you have a special talent for something. Maybe you know things that other people don't know. Maybe you're just a few steps ahead of other people in the room. Being able to speak about the things that you are um, good at or that you have knowledge about is also a way to pay it forward to the community by sharing your knowledge and sharing your passions for things that you do with WordPress. You could just organize a meetup. So some you all have a meetup already, but there are plenty of spaces and plenty of people that live places where they don't have a local meetup. I was trying to help somebody this week find a meetup in their area and discovered there isn't a meetup in their area. There isn't a meetup within two hours of where they live. And so the the question becomes then, do, do I attend online meetups or do I start a meetup in my area? And so if you don't have a meetup in your area and you're passionate about it and you think there's other people in the area that might be able to participate, you can organize a meetup. Go ahead and get it started and uh, pull people together on a regular basis and then bring in those speakers and those clinic nights and everything else. So organizing a meetup is a great way to be involved in the community. But you can find ways to pay it back as well. So there's lots of things you can do in the community, ways that you can pay it back to others and uh, into the community as well. One of the ways to do that is by participating in officially in the open source project. If you go to make.wordpress.org, you will find the different teams that exist within the open source project. From core, which of course has a lot of code in it, to design, uh, there's mobile, accessibility, polyglots if you are a multilingual person. Uh, one of the more recent uh, uh, meet up teams or make teams is photos. And we have been over the last year and a half, a uh, little over a year and a half, accumulating photos in the photo directory. So if you go to wordpress.org slash photos, there are over, I think, 7,000 photos now that have been contributed by people in the WordPress community. And so if you are a photographer and you would like to give your photos into a place where others can use them, uh, they have to be uh, I can't remember the CO something license. If somebody remembers, they can throw it in the chat. But you they have to be yours. You have to hold the copyright on them, and then you have to make them available for others to use them. What the beautiful thing about contributing a photo to the photos directory is, is when you do that, you get a badge on your WordPress.org profile. So if you don't have a badge already, contributing a photo to the photos project is a really great way to get your first badge. I am on the photos team, and if you do contribute a photo, I may be the one that moderates it right into the WordPress directory. So that's a great way to kind of start getting involved without having to do much, especially if you have a whole bunch of photos that you love that are kind of sitting around and you can, can and contribute those. So obviously digital photos, but that's a great way to do it. Or you can even just use the photos that are there. There's over 7,000 photos. Do a search, look for what you're looking for. Um, and maybe you'll find a photo that you can use in uh, on your website or in your social media. They're there for you to be able to use. So there's lots of different ways that you can contribute. And even core isn't just code. So when there's core, you can go in where there's a new release every time you have an update for WordPress, for example. Uh, and every time you have a core release, there's all kinds of different groups that are part of that, including documentation, including marketing, et cetera. So you can contribute to core still without even knowing any code. Um, so I've been part of a core team before. I will be on the next all women non-binary team. And I do not code, I'm not a developer, but I will be on the marketing team and help get the word out about the changes that are coming for that. So there's lots of ways to contribute directly to the open source project. Here's how you can get some uh, clout back for your company. So when you create your profile in wordpress.org, so hopefully you all have a profile at wordpress.org, 
when you create that, you can specify who your employer is. And by specifying who your employer is, that counts towards the five for the future. So when you put your employer in there and then also contribute to a community team or one of the one of the WordPress teams, the hours that you report there actually go towards the five for the future that your company can figure out how much they are contributing towards that, assuming that they are. You can also put whatever you want in your bio there. Um, your member since is the day that you signed up. You put your location, your website, your title, et cetera, in there. And then, like I said, once you start contributing, you see right there, it says contributions. I contribute about two hours to the open source project. Community and marketing, I need to update that so that it also includes photography, uh, the photos team. But I contribute about two hours a week to those teams to help out as much as I can. And then I get badges for the things I do, like being a I'm in the community team, being a meetup organizer. Um, I said I'm not a developer. I do have a plugin in the repository. I can talk to you about that later if you're interested. Um, I will just say it was very easy development. Um, core contributor photos, WordCamp organizer, speakers, the photos team, um, marketing contributor, whatever it is that you do officially for the open source project or whatever team you contribute to officially, you get a badge on your WordPress.org profile. And as I like to say, collect them all. Um, I will never be able to collect them all, but um, I'm off to a good start. You can help organize a WordCamp. So if you have a WordCamp in your area, we had the year that you see this picture from was the very first ever Word, WordCamp Rochester. And I was the lead organizer and little secret, I organized it on my, for my birthday. <laughs> so my birthday was the first day of WordCamp Rochester, our first camp ever. Um, and the after party, I considered my birthday party. So it was a lot of fun. We had a lot, it was a lot of work and it was great. It was a full day of learning and sharing and we had a blast. You don't have to be a lead organizer to be on a WordCamp organizing team. You can help with volunteering. Uh, you can uh, run in the volunteer squad. You can help with getting speakers. Uh, there's so many things. You, if, you're a, if you're a numbers person, you can help with the budget, fundraising, all of the things that we need to do in order to organize a WordCamp. So getting on an organizing WordCamp team is also a really great way to get involved. And you could just simply volunteer at WordCamp. So here we are at the at the registration table at WordCamp Rochester, and you've got your badges, you got your name tags, everything is there. And having that volunteer experience is a great way to get involved too. Just show up and hand out badges or t-shirts or whatever the swag is that year, um, help out with the lunches. Those kinds of things are super important. We need people to run video for, take the videos for the different sessions. We need people to MC the sessions. We need people to organize the after party and the speaker dinner. So there's lots of, lots of ways that you can volunteer at WordCamp. Uh, and, and if it's not even in your own backyard, you can contribute sometimes to WordCamps that are uh, within your area, but a little bit of a drive. So I also help organize WordCamp Buffalo, for example, and I'm on the Buffalo organizing team. So I get to help out with both and contribute in that way. So it's it's just a lot of fun. It's a lot of work. You're exhausted by the end of the WordCamp, but it's just one of those really satisfying exhaustions knowing that you've done some really good work and people had a really good time. And if you don't want to volunteer in an official capacity, almost every WordCamp has what we call the happiness bar. And the happiness bar is just people come, they sit down and they say, I'm struggling with this on my website. Can you help me with this? Um, like I said, sometimes it's as simple as helping people figure out the right contrast on their screens. Um, maybe you are an expert in accessibility and you can help them with something there. I had a person come to me once and said, I just don't understand. How can I make the font purple? And I was like, that I know. So I was able to help her change the color of her font with a little bit of CSS magic. It's not really magic, but with a little bit of CSS. And that woman was so happy when she left the happiness bar. I, like I said, I'm not a developer, but I can still help people because you only have to know a little bit more than the per person asking a question to be able to help them move forward in a great way. So ha the happiness bar, highly recommend hanging out there. You actually get to meet a lot of people too and do a lot of networking when you're sitting there. And if you are comfortable doing public speaking, you could speak at a WordCamp. Uh, it's really great if you have that body of knowledge, just like speaking at a meetup, uh, you could speak at WordCamps. And what's really great about 
the WordCamp also is most WordCamps have vid are videoing, taking video record of the event. And then that video gets put on WordPress.tv. So for example, a lot of the talks that I've given in the past reside on WordPress.tv. I can go back and I can reference them again. I can share them with other people. Yes, WordPress does grow and change. So some of those early talks may not be as applicable as some of the later talks, especially if you're talking about the software itself. Um, so some things, if you go back too far, you'll be like, that's not right. But WordPress.tv is a humongous resource, uh, a great way to learn things. If you're curious about anything in WordPress, you can search it on WordPress.tv and you'll probably find a talk about it. So it's a great opportunity. And like I said, you yourself can have videos that are put up on WordPress TV that will absolutely help others going forward as well. But even just if there's even without the video factor of it, speaking at a WordCamp offer allows the opportunity to share your knowledge. And kind of for me, the very first time I spoke at WordCamp Buffalo was my first one. I as the only time in my life I've ever had imposter syndrome. Because here I was speaking at a tech conference with, an, with a background in higher education. And I had switched careers, but I still thought, I'm going to get up on that stage and people are going to point at me and say, no, that's wrong. You have no idea what you're talking about. But quite the opposite happened. I got up, I talked about hidden features that are in WordPress that a lot of people just don't know about. And then I said, thank you very much. People asked questions. I left, I went to the happiness bar and I had people lined up for about over an hour, just continuing to ask questions and pick my brain, not a single person stood there and said, you know, you're wrong about what you said. Every single person said, wow, I learned so much. Or could you show me more about this, that, or the other? Um, I, could you help me with this? Could you help me with that? And so it gave me an opportunity, not only just to share knowledge from the stage, but also then to network and share knowledge with people off the stage and outside of the presentation room also. So if, you if you're not afraid of public speaking, or if you can kind of get over that lump in your throat when you first think about it, it's a great opportunity to, uh, to share. You can participate in a hackathon. I don't know about a, a very many lately with the pandemic, but we used to have quite a few hackathons in the area. I've participated in them in Buffalo. I started a hackathon in Rochester, uh, which is what's pictured here. And what we did, every hackathon is a little bit different, but our hackathons were creating websites for nonprofit organizations that were within our area. We had them sign up on a website, uh, a WordPress website, of course. We had those, the, the nonprofit sign up. They had to be present in the room. They had to be available to answer questions. But from start to finish, from the when they first arrived in the morning to the end of the day, they arrived with no website. They left with a website. And so the idea was we had people at every table with different levels of ability. So when you look at the table you see in front of you here, we had people who were designers. We had people who were developers. And we had people who had no idea actually how to use WordPress but could go through things like Unsplash and Pexels and, and find and source photos that could be used on the website. So it doesn't matter what level of ability you have, if you show up to a hackathon, you will be put to work and people will absolutely be able to use your skills. And if you're like me, you'll organize a hackathon. So I think I'm not in the picture because I was taking the picture, which is always my preferred way of doing things. Uh, so you'll see all the people that participated in our hackathon that day. We ended up with three websites uh, that started with nothing, end of the day with websites. We had a little competition. They had to present their website at the end of the day just to kind of you know, make it more fun. We had pizza provided and the winning website uh, got a hundred dollar gift card for that nonprofit to Amazon. It was beautiful. We had some sponsors that donated the, the pizza. We had people pay $10 to be there to help us rent the room and things like that. And then we also had people donate those gift cards. And at the end of the day, everybody had this huge sense of accomplishment. There was, you can see the smiling faces. People were really, really excited that we were able to do something so great in such a short amount of time. And if you, if crowds aren't your thing, why not think about building a website for a nonprofit yourself? So when I had my own freelance business, I, every year I would give away a website 
to a nonprofit organization. This one I built for Uduk Hope, which is an organization that raises money to feed children in South Sudan. It provides lunch at school so that children will want to attend school instead of skipping school to find food. So the whole idea is if they have lunch at school, they'll attend school, they will learn, and it will help elevate the entire society. So I donated a website. I built the website. Um, and they were just super grateful for it. And I didn't have to do it at a hackathon. I could do it in my own time frame, but it was a way for me to use the skills that I have to give back to the community in, at large by providing a website and helping that would actually help feed children somewhere. So that was a real feel good for me. But as I say, there is a side effect to everything. And when it comes to contributing with WordPress, for me, the side effect is a lot of fun. I have had so much fun at WordCamps. I have had so much fun at meetups. I have fun when I'm podcasting with people. Um, and even just through the daily work that I do every day, I really enjoy what I do. And WordPress has made that possible. And I can't even tell you the countless friends that I've made as I work through WordPress um, by attending conferences, uh, WordCamps, by attending summits, meetups, and just through work and just even just through Twitter, but also just the networking that happens and, and the friendships that you build through it. Uh, that's been an amazing side effect uh, of WordPress for me. And I got customers because I was working in WordPress. I wish this website still existed. I thought it was beautiful. I loved the way it looked, um, but she's not in business anymore. But this was one I just got to do. I, I was able to just over the years, I built when I was freelancing over 300 websites for different customers. Eventually that did charge more than 300 uh, a person. So if you're doing any math in your head, I was not still living above, below the poverty line, but I did have customers that I was able to help their businesses succeed which in turn, of course, helped my business succeed as well. And finding those amazing customers over the years was, um, it was absolutely fulfilling for me. And ultimately ended up with a full-time career in WordPress. Again, I started out when I left freelancing, I started working for GiveWP. I was working full-time for them. We were acquired in 2021. And then I started working for the parent company, Stellar WP within Liquid Web. And so I have a full-time career. I have a part-time job working at PostStatus. And I have a lot of volunteer hours that goes into working with WordPress for me. Um, I like to, people say to me, how do you do so much? I'm like, I'm a 54-year-old woman living alone with three cats. I've got nothing but time. And the truth is, I, that, that is part of the truth. But the other part is it's something I really enjoy. And I love helping people and I like making things better. So having the career that I do today, because of all the other things that I've done through the past, has been one of the most fulfilling journeys that I've ever had. And that's where the warm fuzzies part comes in. It really does make me happy every day to be able to connect with the people that I do, help the people that I do. And it, I just get so much out of it. So I'll, I'll spend the rest of my career giving back as much as I can because I have taken and gotten so much love and um, career and everything else from this WordPress community. So it's so much fun to be able to share with others how they can give back as well. So if you're just getting started, you've already done number one, you've already joined a meetup. Joining a meetup is, I say it was always like kind of the gateway into the community, but attending WordCamps, co-working, uh, you can go to the wordpress.org forums and help people there. Sometimes there are questions in there that you might know the answer to. And sometimes you have a question that you can put in there that somebody else will get um, somebody else will answer, but then that will actually help other people solve their problems as well. So going to the uh, participating in the wordpress.org forums is a nice, easy way, non face to face, non if you're if you're kind of more introverted than extroverted, that's a great way to get started as well. And helping someone else is always, always a great way to get started. I say together we make the WordPress community the amazing place that it is. I like to think that we don't just have open source software, but that we are also an open source community and the ways that we can give back to each other just makes that grow. It's I, I was fortunate to attend WordCamp Asia in uh, February for it was in Bangkok. And although it was a 17 hour flight uh, and then another six hour flight on top of that, it 
still felt like it was just right next door because the people that I had met uh, online, I got to meet in person. And it really did show that, you know, we say it's a big world, but it's a small world too. And I think that the WordPress community helps me realize uh, just how small and how, how close we all can be. My contact information is there. You are welcome to email me. You are welcome to DM me on Twitter. If there's any way that I can serve as a resource to you and for you, I am always happy to do that and be able to help one another. Um, and I don't know where we are in time, but that's what I've got for y'all today. And I would love to take any questions that you might have and uh, help anybody in any way and see what we got. Thank you so much. This has been so informative and very, very interesting. Thank you.